Ready to break free from algorithms, vanity PR, and money-sucking ads? My name's Larissa Worstick, and I've learned in seven years of jewelry marketing that content is the crown jewel. My agency, Joy Joya, takes a holistic approach, leading with laser-focused storytelling, impactful content creation, and strategic content distribution. This method has worked for the solopreneur as well as the multi-million dollar company, and now I'm sharing the same systems and tactics with you. Here's to standing out in the sea of sparkle. Welcome to episode 283. Today, I'm diving into the world of heroes, but not the kind you might expect from comic books or Marvel films. Instead, my focus will be on hero images and their critical role in digital marketing. The term hero image originates from web design and it refers to the prominently large and often wide image that captures your attention at the top of a website or an email campaign before any scrolling can happen. And this image may sometimes feature overlay text or photos and can even extend to videos or carousel sliders. The purpose of this hero is to reassure your visitors or viewers that they've arrived at the right place. And upon viewing that hero image, they should feel a connection to your brand and a resonance with the products that you offer. This is really meant to be an inviting gateway that encourages exploration, similar to the welcoming display window of a physical jewelry store. This is your chance to showcase your brand identity and inject visual appeal into your homepage or email campaign, especially since other design elements on most effective e-commerce sites and email campaigns should be simplified. And that really helps ensure that the page loads correctly and efficiently across various devices. So when someone enters your online store, via the homepage, that hero image lays the groundwork for the shopping experience online. So if you're excited to learn about how to maximize the impact of hero images on your website and your emails, keep listening or watching this episode. But before we get to the solid gold, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both audio and video, so you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. You can support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Okay, let's get into today's episode, my sparklers. Did you know where the term hero image comes from? Apparently, when I was doing some research, it comes from theater, and in theater, it was used to describe a special prop called a hero prop, prop, and that's made with extra detail specifically for close-up views. So a famous example would be the DeLorean time machine from the Back to the Future movies. Also, hero images have been around even before digital media. Do you all remember newspapers? So on a newspaper, there's a fold, and above the fold on a newspaper, there's usually a big image to catch your attention and give you the day's views with a corresponding headline. Similarly, on websites and email campaigns, the hero image is quote unquote above the fold. But without that actual fold, like on a newspaper, that means everything that you see on your screen before you scroll. I've mentioned before that today's users only spend like less than two seconds looking at email campaigns. When it comes to how long it takes someone to form an opinion about a website, well, that takes all of 0.05 seconds. And that data comes from a study that was published more than 10 years ago. So I'm assuming it's even less now. That means that your hero image needs to do a lot of heavy lifting. So what are the benefits of having an effective hero image? And why should you be caring so much about this piece of visual real estate? Well, first... 
the first impression counts. That effective hero image on an e-commerce website or in an email campaign for your jewelry brand, it sets the tone. It makes a really strong first impression visually. So when it's done well, it should grab attention and really amplify and present the brand's aesthetic and quality. Especially for more luxury items like fine jewelry, this visual appeal can really influence a shopper's perception and interest in exploring more. And when it comes to brand identity and storytelling, the hero image is a powerful tool in your brand toolbox for conveying that identity and narrative. And the right image, when perfectly chosen, can and should evoke emotions and convey things like craftsmanship, heritage, or inspiration behind a product or collection. And this storytelling aspect can connect with customers on a deeper level and make your brand feel more memorable. Also, that hero image It should be highlighting key products or offers. The hero image is part of your merchandising strategy as well. So you can use that hero image to spotlight whatever specific pieces or collections that you want to showcase at any given time or new arrivals, bestsellers, special promotions. This visual focus guides your visitors toward these feature products or deals that can maybe help increase conversion rates and average order values. When you put time and intention and effort behind choosing the right hero image, it can really improve the user experience by making your website or email more visually appealing overall and even easier to navigate because as I said, it kind of guides and invites the user into your site to explore and shop more. It can really guide the viewer's eye to key information or calls to action like shop now buttons or links to more information. And for jewelry shoppers, an engaging visual experience is often part of the shopping journey. And finally, hero images can help build trust and credibility. When you have high quality hero image, like the right resolution, beautifully styled, intentional with the right focal point, saying quality throughout, this can help establish trust and credibility. When the appearance and perceived value of the products are crucial, like in jewelry, then professional and aesthetically pleasing visuals signal to customers that the brand is reputable and committed to quality. And this trust is especially important in e-commerce where customers can't physically inspect the products before purchasing. So how in the world do you choose a great hero image and then make it work for you? So I'm gonna talk separately about choosing heroes for your website versus your email marketing. So let's talk about your website first. One, Quality over everything. You always want to choose high resolution images that showcase your jewelry in the best light. As you probably know, detail is key in jewelry photography. So they should highlight the craftsmanship, the quality, maybe like a lifestyle element, unique design features of each piece. However, keep in mind that these images shouldn't be so high resolution that they slow down the loading of your site. So in general, hero images should have a 16 to nine aspect ratio and be about 1200 pixels wide, but it varies a little bit from website to website. So you can either reference your Shopify theme or work with your web developer to find the ideal size and resolution. Heroes are almost always, I can't even think of a time they're not, be horizontally oriented because they are first designed for desktops and most screens are horizontal. And so photos should be taken specifically for the purpose of being used as a hero in a horizontal orientation to ensure they have the right focal points and can be cropped correctly. But at the same time, the appearance of that hero image needs to be also looking good on mobile. So that hero image not only needs to work on desktop, but but should be responsive and adapt well 
to that vertical look of a phone or a tablet. Other things to consider, ensure that all images adhere to your brand aesthetic. So there should be a consistent style. Maybe it's like a color palette or a background or lighting. And this ultimately helps reinforce your brand identity and creates a seamless shopping experience for visitors. Sometimes you may want to have product close-ups. Sometimes you may want to incorporate lifestyle images. I think a mix of both is really nice. This helps customers visualize how the pieces might look on them, and it adds an aspirational element to your brand. Think about merchandising too. I mentioned this a few minutes ago. So your hero image acts as a virtual storefront. Just as in physical merchandising where displays are regularly updated to highlight different products, collections, or themes, your website's hero image should be swapped frequently. That helps keep the site looking fresh and encourage repeat visits. Even if you're not necessarily releasing new products or collections all the time, using that hero to highlight existing items, collections, that can help capture the customer's attention and influence their shopping journey. So make sure you're regularly updating that hero image to keep your website dynamic and fresh. Think about aligning with holidays, promotions, and events. So adjust that hero image to reflect upcoming holidays like Mother's Day, like let's say you're having Memorial Day sale or you know, Christmas later in the year, whatever events or holidays make sense to your business, if you're having special promotions. So around Valentine's Day, for example, you could feature something that feels a little romantic um, or during the holidays, make that hero image feel a little bit more festive. This relevance encourages engagement and can boost sales during key retail periods. And the last thing I want to say about those website heroes is incorporate clear calls to action or CTAs. So your hero image should have some kind of clear and compelling call to action with a button on it, like shop now, explore the collection. And this guides visitors toward taking the next step, whether that's browsing a collection, signing up for your newsletter, or making a purchase. Let's talk about hero images for your email campaigns now. So when it comes to the points I made about quality, consistency in branding, and lifestyle shots, much of the same advice applies to email heroes as well. But obviously with email campaigns, you are sending them more regularly than you are likely to change up the homepage of your website. So you have to come up with many, many, many more options for hero images for your emails than you have to for your website. You'll also want to use clear, high-res images, but again, not so high-res that it makes the email load slowly, but showcases your jewelry in detail. So given that smaller visual real estate of email images in comparison to website banners, every detail really counts in making your product stand out. And since email campaigns usually showcase a small grouping of jewelry products or even sometimes just one product, then that hero image really needs to be relevant. You kind of can't get away with like a sort of related hero image. It has to tell the story of what you're trying to communicate in the small space of that email. So it does take some pre-planning to make sure you have the right images to tell the story you want to tell. For an email marketing campaign to be effective, it has to do much more than just look pretty. It has to be delivered in the inboxes you want to be reaching. And so that means that images need to look good on both desktop and mobile devices. Considering the significant amount of emails opened on mobile, Those images really need to be able to resize automatically to fit different screen sizes and that they're not so large of a file that they will take forever to load and people won't bother to wait to load them because, you know, as I said, people only look at an email for two seconds, if that, if they can even get it to load. So to avoid those loading load times, which can lead to increased 
abandonment rates, keep that image file size small. So generally aim for images under one megabyte using formats like JPEG, PNG, those all help manage file sizes without sacrificing quality. And the ideal size for email, because they are always the same width in inboxes, would be 600 to 700 pixels for desktop and 320 to 385 pixels on mobile. Speaking of those issues, potential issues with loading, always include alt text for images in your email so that if the image doesn't display due to a recipient's email settings, the alt text will provide context. Plus, it makes your emails more accessible to individuals using screen readers. Before sending out your campaigns, the best way to manage this is just test your emails and test them across different email platforms and look at them on different devices and browsers to make sure that they're loading and that the experience feels consistent for all subscribers. At the end of the day, hero images are much more than just attractive visuals for your jewelry business. They are strategic tools that can influence perception, engagement, and sales. And by carefully selecting and optimizing these images, you can significantly enhance your brand's appeal and effectiveness. Okay, let's get into the gold mine. Welcome to another edition of the gold mine. This is a segment of the podcast where I get personal and share insights on entrepreneurship, mindset, success, growth, all things business. And in this week's gold mine, I want to talk more about the role of merchandising and marketing. I seem to have a lot to say about it. <laughs> Even though I've covered this topic in detail in episode 257, if you want to go back to that one, I want to explore this analogy that I think really showcases what effective merchandising can do for your marketing strategy. So in past discussions of this topic, I've mentioned how marketing can sometimes start to feel like a never-ending loop of repetition for both the business owner and the marketing team. You might catch yourself thinking sometimes, don't people get tired of hearing the same thing? I know that you have thought this at some point, but surprisingly, they don't. Most of the time, people are not fully catching what you're saying even because they're too distracted. So recently, I've been reflecting on the challenges of merchandising and this constant search for new ways to present information to the audience to make it feel fresh and to like just keep reinforcing the message. And during one of these moments, I thought of an analogy, one that made everything feel much clearer for me and hopefully will do the same for you. So I want you to think of marketing and all of that effort to keep showing your products in fresh and exciting ways as similar to a teacher in a classroom trying to keep the attention of a room full of teenagers, <laughs> which <laughs> we all know they're very distracted. They probably don't want to be there. Just like everyone else, they're busy with their phones, lives, and social media. These teens probably want to be hanging out with their friends and not be listening to the teacher. And with a million things on their minds, you as the marketer or in that teacher's shoes, you need to find a way to reach each one. That is your mission. You need to understand that everyone in that room has their own way of learning. Some people need to see things Others need to hear them. Some need to process with more logic. Some need to connect with emotion. And they will all move at their own pace. And it will all click for them whenever it clicks for them. And some will need to hear the message more than others. But it's incredibly rewarding when the one in the room who seemed the least interested comes up to you after class to say, I finally get it. Something about how you explained it today just clicked with me. I've had moments like that as a student also. Like, I didn't understand something. I didn't understand something. And then suddenly, oh, 
it was really that easy all along. (laughs) So for you as the business owner or marketer, you need to be like that teacher. You have to keep presenting your message over and over in new ways and with different methods and in new presentations until your target audience realizes one day they have an epiphany and think, wow, this is something I need in my life. That is your job. If you give up on this job, no progress will be made. So you need to use your creativity to keep finding new ways to share your message. It might seem repetitive to you because you know your product inside and out, but for most people, it just won't click until suddenly they wake up one day and it does. What do you think about that? Does that resonate with you? Do you feel inspired to try to keep telling your message in new ways? I want to hear about it. Did you have any questions about today's episode? You can always email me Larissa. That's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com. If you love this podcast, please share with a friend who'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're completely new to digital marketing, Then you'll want to purchase and read a copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy. Visit joyjoya.com slash book for more information.